Um, and, and yes, uh, we are using artificial intelligence uh, at our uh, two companies that I'm uh, co-founded, CureMetrics and CureMatch, to help prolong lives and save lives. On, on the CureMetrics front, uh, we it's our women's health suite of products where we detect breast cancer uh, to the tune of 99% accuracy. Uh, and we also detect heart disease from the same mammogram. So it's a two for one. And I'm happy to talk about that because heart attacks are called the silent killer amongst women where 65% die on that first heart attack, completely asymptomatic. They never knew they had heart disease and then it's the last heart attack in the first one. Um, and then on Cure Match, it, we started that with a, one of the top oncologists in the world, a lady by the name of Dr. Rizelle Kurzrock, for your listeners, that's K-U-R-Z-R-O-C-K. If you look her up, ton of content and videos on, on her. Um, and with Cure Match, what we developed, uh, if a patient has cancer already, unfortunately, a uh, man, woman, or child, so it's not just women's health on Cure Match. Uh, if a doctor wants to recommend a three drug combination, there's literally over four and a half million combinations. So it's beyond human cognition to process that. What Cure Match does is based on that patient's specific molecular profile of their cancer, will match and recommend um, the, the combination one, two, three that uh, have the highest efficacy, as they say, uh, as, a, yeah. as a decision support tool for the doctor. And does that go across all cancers? It is. It does. It's called pan, so it's pan cancers, the the terminology okay. uh, that's used. So it's for all cancers, um, both companies, and we have them under our AI Med Global umbrella, which is just our DBA name. If you go to AIMedGlobal.com, it drives a cure metrics and cure match. We are a hundred percent digital health, right? We don't have any hardware. We don't have. Uh, uh, any labs. We don't process the cancer biopsy ourselves. We don't want to do that, uh, but we're agnostic. We could take those what's called NGS reports, next generation sequencing reports from any lab, um, large or small. There's public ones like Gardent, which in your neck of the woods, uh, NASDAQ listed company. There's Foundation Medicine that wrote shows. There's others. Um, and uh, and we process that then to produce our cure match report for the doctor. That's interesting. Yeah, my brother got leukemia when he was uh, about 49 and uh, went on interferon, and it took about six months for his blood to get right. And then he had about, and he lost about 50 pounds. And uh, then he, it worked for about six months and then it stopped working. And his blood guy at Kaiser got him into a, um, a trial with Gleevec. And in a week, food tasted good again. Uh, on on interferon, on the other stuff, it tastes like cardboard. So he gained all his weight back, got healthy, had five good years, but then it stopped working. And then um, his only so, option was a bone marrow transplant. So, which he did, but it didn't take. But he he was amazing. He he lived seven more years, and uh, you know was very active most of that time. The last month or so, he finally just. You know, it, it, it finally penetrated his skull. And so they said, sorry. Oh. And, but he was, he was awesome. But it sounds like, well, you my, know, your product might have helped, you know, people like in that situation to figure out what's the best dose. To... Yeah. So one, my condolences to you, David. And, and sadly, this is not the first or the last time I've heard stories like this. Uh, cancer's touched my family as well. My, my wife's a 20 year Hodgkin's lymphoma survivor, had, uh, you know, grandparents pass from cancer as many people and, and statistically one out of two men get cancer, one out of three. So it, the, you know, it, for us, we're very mission driven in that, uh, and it's personal, right? Um, and then, yeah. so the fact, and, you know, the, the case you shared with your brother, um, so, you know, cancer is like, you know, the analogy I'll use is, let me take a step back. If you're trying to block traffic on a highway, um, if you block it, people will find off ramps and on ramps to go around it, right? So you want to block it as high as possible. Cancer is the same. You want to hit it as early as possible to block all the pathways um, at the same time, right? And so what's happening right now is they'll say, oh, well, you know, we, we know this pathway and we'll use this drug because it'll work. But then there's other pathways. If the cancer is a complex cancer, it has more variants. So the cancer will find a way around. So you'll stop it. You know, the food tastes good again. They gain the weight back, but then it spreads and finds other ways. So what Cure Match does is we're actually, not to take anything away from um, 
you know, cancers like Hodgkin's, like my wife had, which if you catch it early enough, it's a very, or prostate cancer, or breast cancer. We all know you catch it early, the odds of survival are very, very high, right? Of course, we know yeah. other cancers like pancreatic cancer, you're very nasty. And unfortunately, by the time it's caught, it's pretty late, right? But um, if a cancer, even breast cancer, you still have, you know, women who are 37 years old that die of breast cancer, right? And and if it's a nasty cancer, um, like nasty, I mean, like there's a very complex, lots of variants. That's yeah. where we're the most useful because we can identify those variants and then the different combination therapies to try to block as many of the pathways as possible. Maybe to, it, it's not going to cure the person, um, but it'll add more life. It'll prolong life. 